All right, we are going to talk about reflections and translations today. We are going to graph them for quadratics. Um, it might help us a little bit to understand what's happening if we compare them to lines. So you all remember y equals mx plus c, right, for a line? And I know that this y equals mx plus b and this vertex form of a quadratic, they obviously are different, right? But you can see that the m and the a are both being multiplied with the x. Do you see that? They're both like the coefficient. So the a is like our new m for a quadratic. What do you think is like the b? What's in the same spot as the b? Okay. The k. So remember that for our lines, the B was in charge of shifting us up or down. So what do you think K is going to do? Uh, shift those up or down. Ding, 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 ding. Good to have you back. <laughs> it's going to shift us up and down. So mathematically, some similar things are happening, but some of these things are going to look different because it's a parabola. So our M, when we had a positive slope, was positive. Right? Our M was positive, and we had a graph that looked like this. Well, in a parabola, we're going to say when our M is positive that it opens up like a cup. Whoops. I want two letters. Okay, now when we had a negative M, we would have a negative slope, right? But for a quadratic, we don't have a line. What's going to happen instead is that our parabola is going to open down like a frown. Okay? So down like a frown. So that's what the A value is going to do. The other thing that the A value did for a line is that it made, let's say that we had a line with positive slope. Okay? It could make it vertically stretched. So in a quadratic, what that looks like is that our parabola would get very tall and skinny. Okay, think about what happens to like old people's necks. They get stretched out. It's happening to me right now. And also my jowls. So vertical stretch happening right before your eyes. Okay. My bones are getting vertically compressed, so I'm actually getting shorter. <laughs> All right, so the vertical compressing is going to make our parabola kind of flat looking, kind of wide and flat looking. You see the difference? Yeah. Okay. You guys seen satellite dishes? Would yeah. it surprise you to know that that came from a parabola? So they take like a really wide compressed parabola and then they rotate it around an axis and that makes the shape of the satellite dish. And the reason that they do that has to do with the properties of a parabola. Like any signal I send into a parabola and it bounces off will hit the antenna. It's pretty cool. So that's why they do that to enhance the signal. All right, so that was a little bit of science for you. Let's talk about the vertex. The vertex is the H and the K. So the vertex, remember, is just a point. It's got an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. The H is the X and the K is the Y. Do you see how they're both in alphabetical order? So you don't have to worry about like, okay, which one's which? H goes with X, K goes with Y. H is going to shift us from side to side, which makes sense because isn't X sideways? Mm -hmm. Okay. So left or right, that's our H. K, like the B, shifts us up or down. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, I can only move it so far down. If this doesn't fix it, will you find a new spot? Just for that? Did that help? Okay. Okay. So, 
When we had like a B of three, we shifted up three units, right? Same thing with K. K is going to be just like the B. It's going to tell the truth. So I want you to write that K tells the truth. Now, do you see this goofy little negative sign in front of the H? That's going to make H a little tricky. H is the one that's going to look like it's lying. So I want you to write H lies and circle it. Keep that in your mind. We'll talk about why H lies in a minute. H. I wonder why. Oh, I will tell you shortly. Okay, so next. Look at this little picture. What is the vertex for this graph? Negative three, four. Yes, negative three, four. Just put it right in the middle. Don't write too big because you're going to have to label it. Okay, so the x coordinate is the h. That looks like an N. And the Y coordinate is the K. Okay, and so the little bubble tells us that the quadratic function, this one, has an A value of negative 1. Why do we know this A value had to be negative? Um, Because it's a frown. Because it's a frown. Yes, it's a negative because it's a frown. Okay, so the A is negative 1. The H is negative 3. And the K is 4. Using that information, we can write an equation for this graph in vertex form. You don't have to do this on your paper if you don't want to, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to recopy down this form. So y equals, oh, can you wait please? Thank you. y equals our a value, open parentheses, x minus whatever the h is, close parentheses, square it, add 4. Just kidding, add k. I started plugging it in my head already. Okay. So we have an A to plug in, we have an H to plug in, we have a K to plug in. The only thing we're going to leave as letters are the X and the Y, and that's going to give us our parabolic shape if we let them vary and be variables. So we write this. Y equals our A is negative 1. Um, bring down the parentheses, bring down the X. Now, I have a minus from the formula and then a minus on my 3 for my h. Correct. So if I have minus a negative, that turns into a plus. Close your parentheses, square it, and then add the 4. Now, if you are just looking at this equation, can you tell that k is a positive 4? Yeah, because k tells the truth. What does H look like it should be? Does it, you see it looks like it should be a positive 3? What was it really? That's why we say it lies. Does that make sense to everybody? Because it's like the opposite of what it looks like because of this minus in the formula. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. All right, let's look at our good old friend, the quadratic parent. <clears throat> okay, if we were to write the quadratic uh, parent in vertex form and fully expand it, it would look a lot bigger. It would look like this. Um, f of x equals, what's the a value in front of x squared? 1. And then I don't have anything added to x before I square it. So I'm uh, subtracting 0 before I square. And then at the very end, I'm adding nothing. So I'm also adding 0. So here's the A, here's the H, here's the K. Just by looking at it, can you tell what the vertex is? 0, 0. It's the H and the K.
Okay, just for old time's sake, we're going to make a table to use. Um, and then after that, you're not going to have to make a table that shows your calculator steps for like every single one anymore. Those days are gone. You're welcome. I'm going to show you a nifty little graphing pattern that you're going to be able to use that is going to make you so fast graphing parabolas. Remember how in unit three we had to do all that table stuff for the line? Mm -hmm. And yep. then in our unit four, we're just like, oh, you just find the y-intercept and count the slope. Rise over run, baby. Find another point. Okay? We're going to do something just like that for quadratics. So we're going to need to use get a table to figure out our pattern, though. So here is our quadratic little table of x's and y's. If I square a negative 2, negative 2 times negative 2 makes what kind of 4? Positive 4. Good. If I square a negative 1, what do I get? 1. Square 0, I get 0. Square 1, I get 1. Square 2, I get 4. Do you see that our vertex is in the middle of the repeats because of the symmetry of the parabola? Like I could look at this table and just be like, oh, it's in the center of when the y values repeat. Okay, cool. So this is the pattern. I'm going to write it over here. Instead of doing x and y, on the x side, we're going to do sideways, left or right. And then instead of y, we're going to do up. Now this pattern is going to come from our table. So if you look at our vertex, if you go left, negative 1. Negative 1 is left, right? Mm -hmm. Negative 1. Or if you go right, positive 1, how much do you go up either way? Mm -hmm. 1. So this is what we write. Right or left 1, we go up 1. If we go either left 2 or right 2, what is our up? 4. Because whether I square a negative 1 or a positive 1, I get 1. Whether I square a negative 2 or a positive 2, I get 4. What do I get when I square a 3 or a negative 3? Nine, thank you for not saying six. You guys are the first group that didn't say six. Okay. Better late than never, right? Okay, that's our pattern. So every single time we're going to start at the vertex, and then we're going to use that nifty little pattern, find a couple more points, and we're done. Start at the vertex. Zero, zero. Whether I go left one or right one from the vertex, I'm going to go up one. You see how it gives me two points for the price of one? Yeah. yeah. It's really nice. It like, it makes it less than half of the work. Okay, start back at the vertex again. Go left two, up four. Go back to the vertex. Right two, up four. The difference between this and graphing a line is that you don't keep hopping from your new point. You go back to the starting point, the vertex, every single time. Okay. Now I'm going to go left 3, up 9. Right 3, up 9. Those are my 5. Actually, that was 7 points. Those are my points. Smooth, beautiful parabola. Arrows on both ends. She's done. Dang, we're good. Now, that was the parent. Does the parent have any transformations at all? Nope. Correct. So our parent has no transformations, so we can just write none. No rocks, no vertical stretch or compression, and no shift. None. All right, next one.
Okay, it says that we have to start at the vertex. We can get our H and K from this uh, graph. I mean, not graph. I even thought about it and I still said the wrong word. From this equation. So let's find the A, H, and K. What's my A value? One. A is 1, so I'm going to open up like a cup, just like the parent. Okay, what's my H? This one's tricky. What kind of two? Ooh. H lies. Yes, it's a negative two. And the K tells the truth. So just one. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Okay. So I already know my vertex. Negative one. Sorry, negative two, one. I already know the pattern really fast. Okay, I already know the pattern. I'm going to go left or right. And then I'm going to go up. If I go left or right one, I go up one. Square two, I get four. Square three, I get nine. So I start at my vertex. Left one, up one. Right one, up one. Left two, up four. Oh, brain, my brain. Right two, up four. Left three, up nine. Right three, up nine. Connect them. Arrows. Mic drop. Do you remember how much you used to have to write? No. It's probably because it was so traumatic you blocked it out. Next to your table, do you remember having to write out every single thing with the X's plugged in? Yes. Even though you just put it in your calculator? Mm -hmm. Well, some of you didn't do it. You lost points for that on the test, but most of you did. All right, any questions about that part? Do they all have no transformation? This has a transformation. Okay, did we reflect it? Is it upside down? No. No, no rocks. No rocks. Did we stretch it or compress it vertically? No, our A was just one, right? So we didn't multiply it by two and make it tall. So no vertical stretch or vertical compression. We have a shift, though, I heard someone say. Which way did we shift and how many? Left two and up one. So that's what we say. We put our little box. We say shift left two and up one unit. So even though now instead of just up and down where you can go left and right, I think it's easier to see on a parabola than it was on a line. You just look for the vertex and that tells you the shift. The H and K, the vertex, tell you the shift, just like the Y intercept did. Cool, 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 cool. All right, next one. All right, expand this with me really quick. Y equals negative 1, open parentheses, x minus 0, quantity squared plus 0. Yes? What is the vertex? 0, 0. Here's my h, here's my k. So I put my vertex on there. Um, take the emergency one. It's just my ID badges with the room number 302 on it. Yeah, that. You're welcome. Got it? Okay, so the pattern. It says if we go right or left one, we go up. One. One. I forgot to do right or left. I'm up. Okay, 
If we go right or left two, we go up four. four. Right or left three, we go up nine. nine. I forgot to talk about my A value because I was excited. What's my A value? Okay, so we've got to open down like a frown. So for our pattern, are we going to do ups? No, I'm going to go down instead. Good. I'm going to go down like a frown. Okay, so left one, down one. Right one, down one. Back to the vertex. Left two, down four. Right two, down four. Back to the vertex every time. Left three, down nine. Right three, down nine. Nice, smooth parabola, no points, no goal posts, arrows on both ends. Only one. It's the rocks. Yep. Okay, we've got no vertical stretch or vertical compression, and we've got no translation. Okay, this is a weird little one. What is our A value? If there's just a negative sign there, what is that? Negative, negative one. Yeah. So just by looking at this, what is our first transformation? If we have a negative one for an A value. Yeah, we got a rocks. Good. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. So if it's just one or negative one, guys, we don't have a stretch or compression. A stretch or compression would be like, if we had a two or a negative three or a one half or a negative one fourth, that would be like what our A value could be. So we have no vertical stretch or vertical compression. Now look at your H and K. What's the H? Two, and what's the K? It's hiding. It's zero, right? Okay, so the H and K tell us the shift. So will we have a shift here? Yes. Yeah, which way? How many? Right two. Right two, correct. Notice that we can do that just by looking at the equation. We don't even need to see it graphed. That's something you will also need to know how to do for your test. So make sure you practice doing that. Make sure you can like spot the transformation before you do it. Okay, what's our vertex? Two zero. Okay, which way are we going to open? Down. Yep. If our A is negative 1, we're going to open down. So I'm going to copy down my little pattern. 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. And instead of going up, I'm going to go down. So, left 1, down 1. Right 1, down 1. Left two, down four. Right two, down four. Uh, left three, down nine. Right three, down nine. So is this more complicated than graphing a line? 
Yeah, but it's kind of also easier to see. You know what I mean? And because we've already done all the transformations, kids do really well with the stuff in this unit. Questions for me? Okay, go ahead and flip it. Okay, this little box is just for reminders. So we're going to fill out the box and then I'm going to turn you loose on example five. So the A value tells us which way the graph will do what? Starts with an O. Open. Okay, whether it opens up like a cup or down like a frown. And then it tells us how wide or narrow. It also, um, H is going to tell us if we shift what? Left or right. And then K tells us how to shift up or down. Okay, what else do we know that's weird about H? It's H is in parentheses. What else? What is special about it? Can we trust it? H lies. Okay, now you've got your little cheat sheet. I want you to match these up. this and like you don't know what to do what you need to look at is do you see how whatever one does these two are kind of like opposites because if this is the H or the K like they're gonna be doing opposite things because the signs are opposite so you pick one and you put it in the calculator and then you see what it does and then you know the other one does the opposite and you get two for one so let's put one of them in the calculator um, so if I put this in the calculator, let's do, was it minus 7? I can do x squared minus 7. I go to graph. What happened to it? Yeah, the vertex shifted down 7 units. So the plus 3 one, that is going to go up. So I know two of them right off the bat. So this one was... B, and this one was C. Okay, what about the next one? What about the one that has the plus 2 in parentheses? Is it left or is it right? Remember, H lies. You were right the first time. Yeah, it's left. The only way that we get a plus, remember, is if we have the minus a negative for the H. So that's a negative 2, so that's a left. So that one's left. The other one is right. And then the last one is the rocks. How did you guys do? All right, let me draw these arrows real quick. This one was up, that one was down. Any questions about how we figured this out or like what to do if you have a brain fart on the test and you have to use your calculator? Okay, cool. All right, so for this one, guys, we have to compare these characteristics we have to compare the vertex, axis of symmetry, min or max value, the domain, the range, the opening direction for these two different functions. Okay, one of them we have a graph for, and the other one we only have the equation. Wouldn't it be nice if we had two graphs to look at? I'll take that as a no, but seeing as how the only no was like not in this class, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> so, what's our A value for this one? Yes, really quick. Okay, what's our A value? 
Negative one, good. So which way will this one open? Okay, I'm gonna help you out. It opens down like a frown. All right, what's the H? Positive two, and the K is negative three. Okay, so positive two, negative three. Ooh, what do you notice? Uh-huh. Do they have the same vertex or a different vertex? Yeah, the same vertex. Okay, now we're gonna use our pattern. So we've got left or right and up. So one, one, two, four, three, nine. If it's supposed to open down, are we gonna go up? No, we're going down. Because our A was negative one and the negative makes us go down. Okay, so then you can plot some more points using your pattern. Arrows on both ends. Okay. Let's look for the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry chops the parabola in half. What do you notice? Is it the same or different? The same. Now, yesterday we had to write min or max value statements. Okay. Here we're just talking about the min or max value. So right here, the, min, the minimum value for the original function two is negative three. What is the minimum or the maximum value for the orange function? Negative three. Do you see that those are the same value? Okay, so we're gonna say that that's the same. Okay, domain. Do they have the same domain or different domains? What was our domain for every parabola that we graphed with arrows? Ooh, look at your notes from yesterday. Look at all of your ones from with arrows. Did you get it? The ones where the ball was bouncing on the ground, it had like a start and a stop, right? But if we have arrows on both ends and it goes on forever, then what is it? Yeah. yeah, it's all the x values. Don't they both have arrows? So both of these have the same domain of all our real numbers. The symbol, if you want to use the little symbol for all real numbers, is this fancy R for all the real numbers. Okay, what about the range? What was the range for the original function two? The one that was already graphed in black ink. Above the vertex or below the vertex? The one the computer graphed. Above, so that one has to be greater than or equal to negative three. Okay, what about the orange one I graphed? Less than or equal to because it's below the vertex. 
it's either above or equal to the vertex or less than or equal to the vertex. So are those the same? No, one's all of this, the other one's all of that, right? So those are very different. What about opening direction? Both different, one opens up, one's down. Any questions about how to do that one? Okay. Whew. Man, over that break, I kind of lost my teacher voice a little bit and I'm getting hoarse. All right, for this one, we have to pick all the ones that are false. So we're gonna label them true or false and pick the, pick the lies from the truth. Okay, so we've got h of x is x squared. Do you guys see that that's just the parent? So the parent vertex is 0, 0. Okay, the pattern is um, right or left 1, up 1. Right or left 2, up 4, right? Woo, 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 woo. Okay, that's him. What am I supposed to do to the parent? Hey, can you put that far away? Guys, what am I supposed to do to this parent? What do the directions say? I underlined it in pink. Yeah. So it's going to get first reflected and then shifted right. You see where it's going to end up? So my little vertex is going to be over here at 5, 0. And I'm going to open them down. Okay, true or false? The number of x intercepts stays the same. How many does this have? How many does my original function have, the blue one? How many x-intercepts does my blue function have? One. How many does this one have? One. Did that number stay the same? Yes. So that one is true. Okay. True or false, the opening direction stays the same. No, one was up, the other one's down. What about, ooh, I want to pick that one. The axis of symmetry stays the same. That's also false, you're correct. Because the chopper and halfer is here, and then it moves over here, right? All right, what about the range stays the same? Correct. One is greater than or equal to, the other one is less than or equal to. True or false, the vertex stays the same. Did that stay the same? No. False. So four of them. Put your phone away. Okay, this last one is cutie and he's really short and sweet. I want you to alter the equation. What does alter mean? Change. We're going to change the equation to make its vertex a max instead of a min. So right now what it looks like is this. It shifted up three units. And its vertex is at a minimum. How do I turn a min into a max? What transformation do I need? Yes. Do I have to change the A, the H, or the K to get a reflection? The A, what do I have to do to it? Make it negative. We are going to make the A negative to give us a max. Okay, so 
it'll be y equals negative 1x squared plus 3. And you can put both of those in your calculator to make sure that we did it right. So what do we change the sign of? Change the sign of the A. Ah, uh -huh, the A value. And we can turn a min into a yeah. max. Now suppose I wanted to turn the max into a min. What would I have to do to the A? Make it positive. Bingo. Okay, work time. Five, two, two, three, four, four.